Um, my name is Biftu and I'm a recovering addict. This is not easy to do because one, I'm a girl and I'm Muslim and I'm a mother. And I'm not young, even though I look young. I'm in my 30s, I'm 33 years old. I just wanna talk about, um, there's just a stigma in general. It's not just the Somali culture. I believe it's just the East African culture. I guess just people that don't, that didn't grow up in America, even like Asians, it's a, it's a taboo to talk about. Um, yeah, this, this topic in general is serious. I don't know why this community is not taking it serious. We're not blind, we're not deaf. We see how many people we bury every week and it's mainly due to substance abuse, even the murders. Nobody in their right mind is gonna just get up and kill somebody. There's people killing their own friends because they're so high out of their mind and then they wake up the next day, like, did I do that? It's, it's serious, you know? And then we think it's not our kid until your kid is dead or until your kid's in jail. And just how hard the community makes it to want to get help. I'm sorry, this is really hard, but nobody wants to be an addict. Nobody grows up and says, hey, I'm going to be a drug addict when I grow up. Nobody. We're not losers, we're human beings, we're Muslim, we're alive, we're here. But you guys just look at us like we're nobody, like we're not there, like you don't hear us, like you don't see us, knowing that your sons or daughters are probably just like us, but you don't want to admit to it. And like one of the brothers up here said, they won't even admit to their kid that overdosed. Like, they're not even dealing with their own pain. Like, that's how much of a taboo it is. Imagine as a mom burying your kid and then lying about why your kid died. You know how, how that would hurt as a mom? That hurts. Like, we're human beings. You know, you are a product of your environment. I'm 33. I've been here since I was two. I'm talking in English because that's all I know. Like, when I was younger, I hate to say this, but I kind of knew this community was something like this was going to happen because the ignorance of it, you know, like I was like 15 smoking weed, but I'm a crackhead because I'm smoking weed. But looking now, people are really smoking crack for real. Go stand on Chicago and Franklin. It's sad. There's people that don't even speak English talking about Xenix, Xenix Araba. Like I, I used to work at a clinic in Alina. There's, older patients come in that are Somalian, this older patient that used to come in, he didn't even know he was addicted to pills. He just used to come all the time saying, Xenix que garaba, Xenix que garaba. But me, I'm an addict, I'm knowing like, dang, he's, he's addicted. You guys just need to make it easier. And like, no disrespect to the mom earlier, she was saying like, when girls use and stuff, nobody wants to marry them. That's not true because half these boys are just like us. They're insecure. They're probably gonna think, who can I get besides a drug addict wife? Like, and that's not okay. You're supposed to build us up, not break us. And alhamdulillah, like, I have a really strong mom. My mom, may Allah bless her, she's always there for me. She, she pushed me into treatment. But me, I didn't want the, that label, you know, a lot of Tiwe Walate, she's in treatment, or just, just how people look at you. But I did it, and it, it empowered me. I know that sounds like so weird, but it did. I, I, I feel free. I don't know how to explain it. Being addicted to something, like you guys know a hamster that runs in this little circle thing? That's the life. Like you're just running in a circle that never stops until death or something hits you. Addiction is real and it's hitting this community harder than ever because of his, our ignorance. We just want to hide stuff. Like, like, no. It's way past ebb right now because we're burying at least twice of the youth. It's two people a week, normal. Like, it's like normal now. If it's not an overdose, it's a shooting. I'm 33. I know over 10 people that are dead. That's not okay. My best friend's in a wheelchair. 
a girl, and she wasn't even an addict. She was just partying at the wrong place, at the wrong time. You guys, this, we need to just stop. Not you guys, we, because I used to do that too. Before I was in my addiction, like, what's wrong with this person? Like, look down on them, like, oh, let me stay away from this person. Because I thought I was better because I had just smoked weed. And I partied a little bit, but don't kick your kids out, especially Gabdaha. Wallahi, you guys don't know the stuff I've seen with girls. Like, we would leave the club or whatever, and she would leave with any random guy because she knows she can't go home drunk. You know? There's girls out here blacked out off Xanax getting raped and they can't even tell their mom because they're gonna get snapped on. Imagine being raped and not being able to tell nobody because you're gonna get blamed for being raped. No. There's a lot happening to the girls and you guys need to talk about it. A lot. Like we're Benny Allen too, we're human beings. You know, like we fell into the trap of this life. It happens, we're not bad people. I guess you could say I was like a functioning addict, like I thought it was okay, I had a house, I had a job, like I, I was doing what I had to do. But eventually, you know, it just, it all comes to an end because it's deeper than the drug, you know? It's in, it's in our soul, something, and we're trying to fill that void. And that void can, it comes from home. You know, communication, talk to your kids. Like, not habar them, not kick them out. Like, understand them, like, it's fahma. You know, like, it's, we grew up in two different worlds. You guys grew up in Africa, and we grew up here. It's, it's temptations, you want to fit in. Now that I'm older, I regret a lot of stuff. When I was younger, I thought I was fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. There's nothing wrong with smoking weed. It is. Like, one of the guys stood up here. I couldn't eat or go to sleep without smoking. That's not okay. And like he said, eventually you graduate. Because it's not about the drug. It's that whatever that pain in your heart. I thought I was fine. I stopped drinking alcohol. And I was just smoking my weed. I stopped partying. I'm like, oh, I'm okay. But I have a disease called Crohn's disease. I was getting prescribed oxycodones. I was taking it normally. But something happened, I don't know, my third pregnancy, I guess postpartum depression, it just hit me hard. I was getting these pills prescribed anyways, and I just started doubling up on the dose because it makes you feel good. I'm cleaning my house, I'm doing, like, you're just on point. You think you're like, okay, this is, I, I found it, and this, this is what it's gonna be. And it's from a doctor, so you think it's okay. And it's not. So you see yourself in that cycle, just chasing it. The first time I knew something was wrong, is when I went and spent my own money to buy pills. But it didn't stop me. It only got worse. Like you said, I had a $200 habit a day. Imagine and take a can of $200 every day. You're gonna become a criminal. You're gonna steal. You're gonna do stuff. Because if you don't get that drug, you're gonna be sick. You're gonna be on the toilet throwing up and shitting on yourself, literally. You think any Benny Adams gonna sit there and do that? No, you're gonna go get your fix. And I'm just like, alhamdulillah, I have my family to just always be there for me, just always. I, mean, I, could, I could come home in any mind state. My mom would never lock her door. I was, my, my mom was like a little shelter. She welcomed all the kids, like afterwards, even boys. She would let them sleep downstairs. My mom has four kids. All four of her kids are addicts. Imagine how she feels as a mother. That's heartbreaking. She sat down one day, she was like, Hoya, what did I do? Like, yeah, how about it? My mom never touched a drug in her life. She never drank ever in her life. But she still had the heart to understand me and love me and be there for me. And wallahi for that, like, I love my mom to death. Without her, only Allah knows where I would be right now. So to the mothers, just, just be there for Ilmihin and just stop being so tough on the girls. We don't have no magic power, we're human beings too. Like, I don't understand why you, you guys think like we have this power that we could, we're better. No, we have, I think, more issues. Kind of. The things girls go through, 
We, we don't talk about problems in our community. If a girl gets touched by an uncle or something or whatever, does she go talk to her family? No. She just knows when she's 14 or 15, oh, I hit this blunt. That feels good. I'm going to keep doing that. Because once you do that, you know that negative feeling in your heart stops. So you just keep going and keep going and keep going. And then you're just going to see you're lost in it. And when I say lost, I swear to God, it's, it's just that. You feel so lost. You feel so alone and so miserable. Like, I, I never wish addiction on nobody. Just, I think people just really need to start listening to each other and stop judging less. Well, like, what did the judgment get us? Look, look at our community. I hate to say it, but when I was 15, I really kind of knew this was going to happen. People were just so ignorant. Like, oh, we're African, we're special. Why? Why are we special? Why? Why does substance abuse not touch us? Why do we think that? Why does mental illness not touch us? Like, we just think we're special? No. Mental illness is real, substance abuse is real, and they go hand in hand. Nobody's a drugisto. You just imagine, like, who, who wants to walk around literally just miserable, fiending for something, just dying, like, I need this, I need this. Who do you, like, anybody in their right mind, who would they want to, who want to live like that? But people are downing you every day, like, you made a choice to live like this. Like, this is not a life we chose, it, it, like, it chose us. You don't realize that until you're older. And that's what I'm going through right now. A lot of regret, a lot of remorse. And then to the young kids, what I really want to say to the young kids, don't let like TV, right? And all these music videos and stuff, you know? Kawalo, like that song, Papa Perk, and I get my stamina. Yeah, you're gonna have stamina for like 30 minutes. And then what? This, for real, like to the young kids, wallahi, this is not the path you guys want to go down. You do not want to imitate this life. What you guys see on TV is fake. Don't you see these famous people? They're rich, but they commit suicide. All the money in the world, but killing themselves. Because it's that void, that thing that's missing in your heart. Just this maqla, that's what I was saying. And then as far as treatment-wise, it took, it, it took me really long to go to treatment because I didn't want to be labeled, you know? I just didn't want to be labeled. And I didn't want my pills to stop because if you go to treatment, you get on Suboxone and all of a sudden your pill stops, you know? But at a certain point, you gotta love yourself. You gotta love your mom. When I think about how much pain I caused my mom, it just makes me cry till this day. Well, I have the best mom in the world, but yet I caused her so much heartache. But till this day, my mom doesn't blame me for nothing. She doesn't make me feel guilty about nothing. Because at a certain point, like, why is family? Like, I just broke down to my mom and I was like, why need the Igadilis all the time? I'm like, you're my mom. You're the person I'm supposed to come and talk to about my problems. I'm supposed to trust you. And she kind of just changed. And she started listening to me. And she just she kept pushing me to treatment. My mom, my family, they were okay that I went to treatment. I was scared of my friends. And guess what kind of friends? The friends that are using the drugs with me. I'm caring what these friends that are doing the drugs with me are gonna think. Like, no, you need to get yourself in treatment. I don't know why I'm caring what they think. Because I don't want to be labeled by people who, are, who need to be in treatment. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy, like, the whole, how your mind works when you're in addiction, like, you're not yourself, it's, and that's a scary feeling, I think that's one of the reasons I went to treatment, too, like, I didn't know myself no more, I couldn't even look in the mirror, when I say I couldn't look in the mirror, well, lie, be like, to lie, I literally could not look myself in the mirror, because I didn't know who I was anymore, I was doing stuff that I didn't, I used to look down on people doing, like, I didn't know who I was. That's not a good feeling. That's not 
And then people around me losing their kids. This girl we know dropped her baby drunk. And he's all broken up. Well, I just make it easy on the girls. Make it easy for them to ask for help. You guys, and it's not just this America Kokore. You'll be shocked how many people are popping oxycodones. Like, seriously. It's, it's bad out here. And how the people are going to fentanyl. They're literally playing Russian roulette with their life. Just think about that. You know this thing is going to kill you. You know that. You have a chance, literally, 50 50 chance. If you do this, wa demonesa. 50 50 chance. Would you do it? Would any of you do something that you know you have 50 50 chance of doing it? You wouldn't, right? If you're going to die, you wouldn't. So, what do you think is hurting these kids so bad that they're taking that risk just for a moment to be high? They know they could die, but they still do it. That's pain. They have that much pain in their heart. They probably low key want to die. When I was in my addiction, when I woke up certain mornings, that's how I felt. Ilahi just, just kill me because I'm useless. I'm casado. That's really how I felt. I used to wake up and be like, why am I still alive? It's just, it's, it's just painful, you guys. I know too many people that die that I'm close to. They shouldn't be dead. They didn't even make it to their 30th birthday. I feel better now, but I'm, I'm glad I did this. I was really scared to do this, but this is needed. This is needed really bad. And I just wish more people would speak up and more people would talk. Because there's a lot of people. And it's sad. And then you guys want to know something else? What the drug dealers do to our community? They double the prices on the drugs on us. Do you guys know that? Because they know you're going to come out your pocket for that. That's how bad these kids want it. They get charged double what another per other races and stuff will. Because they know you're going to buy it. Irmahan, they're hurting. And we need to help them. It's a lot of pain. And I know you guys know this. It hurts. When you're in middle school and you're talking to your friend and you're going to like, Hey, we're going to have our kids, they're going to be friends, they're going to be like this and like that. And she or he never makes it to that age. That hurts. The friend that is alive. There's a lot of guilt. Like, why am I alive? Why is this person dead? And that makes you used too. I say seek help. See a lot of therapists. Therapy is real. It helps. Talk to people. Just, it's fama. That's all I can really say. Understand each other. Talk to each other. Or we're just going to keep dying and it's going to get worse. That's the sad part. If something doesn't happen, Wallahi is going to get worse. Like, I'm scared to go on Facebook now or Snapchat because you're going to see RIP. Then when the hat is stag, I'm like, who? I'm just, I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of it. And whatever I could do, I want to help. And if it's there in my story is to help, I'm going to do that. Another round of applause, please.